Jeff, tell me about uh, this piece we have in front of us, first of all. Nine conversations. Yeah, there's a, there's a bracket around the A and the T because uh, uh, you could read it as conversations or conversions. It's just playing with uh, scraps of material and uh, colours and textures. There are uh, nine pieces on a, a nice substrate mounted all together. Um, I did show it at first light, um, which I understand you attended. So I was at first light. This is the uh, the, the festival on the beach uh, in the summer to celebrate the first lights. Uh, and again, very resonant for you guys being all focused around Nest Point, most easterly point. Um, and this was on the, the longest day. Sadly, it was also absolute torrential rain and thunderstorm. I mean, it was like a half hour thunderstorm with lightning out to sea. Yeah. I mean, it. It looked very dramatic, but I wasn't trying to hold a gazebo full of artwork down. <laughs> how, how was it for you? Uh, well, compared to the first first light, which was a glorious, dry sort of uh, 24 hours, this was it was pretty horrendous. Um, and unfortunately, um, despite the best efforts of a couple of the members of East the Artists, um, Ali and, and Paul, who were holding the gazebo away from... Uh, from the, the artwork. Uh, unfortunately, mine did get quite badly damaged. Uh, fortunately, the, the actual uh, um, pieces that were in relief weren't damaged, but the, the mounts were had to be completely replaced. So it's been reborn for this. Uh, OK, so we've got nine uh, conversations conversions. Uh, let's draw our eyes round to a couple of the... Uh, other pieces. We've yeah. got the joy of gardening over here. So again, these are kind of multimedia, mixed media collages yeah. with what have we got here? Skateboarders jumping over walls in a kind of stately home garden. Yeah, through this. Quite a tale to these pieces. There's actually um, 24 of them. Um, a number of years ago, pre-lockdown, I was in a second-hand bookshop in Sheringham, and just browsing, love books, love old books and I found a, a Victorian portfolio um, badly foxed, it was a series of sepia prints of the Tivoli Gardens in Italy um, and I looked at it and I thought this is lovely this is, these are really interesting illustrations, looked at the price and they wanted three quid for it so I thought marvellous, I'll take that I said to my wife, I think I'm going to do something collage with this I'd love to she groaned and raised it. She calls it my stickings, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I thought, this will be a piece I'm not going to brush. I've got other things I'm going to do. I'm just going to take my time. And the whole thing took over two years. And I rebound the portfolio as a series of analogue collages. But I'd also scanned them. So I then worked in digital form on those scans, so that, that's where the mixed media bit comes in. Uh, and the idea, I guess, not so much with the joy of gardening, which is meant to be a bit more playful, but some of the others, are, to me, they have a dark side, because it's how man can create something beautiful, like the Tivoli Gardens that people visit and love. We create beautiful things, and then actually we can also mess them up. You know, with the, you know, that's the paradox that we've got in the world at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, and I guess that's an interesting point as you um, find yourself living in exceptional times and it seems that every month is a, an exceptional time and it doesn't look like it's, it's slowing down. We live in a very polarised world. We live in a world of extremes if we're looking at the kind of global stage as people are with the, the cop summit uh, ongoing and um the disparity between you know industrialized countries who have impacted climate change and poorer parts of the world Absolutely. who are impacted by climate change more uh, even with our our own society here you know within Lowestoft we've got some very wealthy and some very poor people experiencing our world yeah. side by side in very different ways. How, how do you interpret that, manage that, do present that as an artist? Um, 
I think what I'm trying to do is juxtapose elements within the piece. So there'll be, there may be pieces from historic, you know, with a historical reference. Uh, there may be things from, I've, I've actually plundered some si um, silent movie imagery as well, actually, from going back to Cecil B. DeMille's days and things like that. Uh, old news, real images, uh, single images that seem to suggest things like famine or, or whatever, and use those as a counterpoint in, in the image. I think, I think sometimes people could pass that by and not appreciate it. That is absolutely fine. People get out of artwork what they, they can, but it was, it's very important to me that that's there even if it's in a small, small, you know, life can be wonderful, but there's, there's also pathos and there's also, uh, you know, potential <laughs> for things going wrong. <laughs> the kind of contrast between that quite political work and, I guess, 5,208 subjects, is that also political? So this is a, a portrait of the Queen made from um, the... The tops of vaccine vials. Yeah, it, it, it is, yeah. And, and the title represents the number of people who would have been vaccinated by that, those amounts of, of doses. If it's political, it's only with a small p. Um, I, I think it's more reflective because it occurred to me again, whatever one thinks of the Queen. Um, in her reign, I don't think she could ever have been expected to be monarch during the time of a pandemic. Um, and so it was extraordinary that her 70th year on the, on the throne was a time where she'd been through, you know, something that affected the whole globe. I mean, of course, she's, uh, she'd been through a war and, uh, and so on, and several prime ministers. But I don't think she would have been expecting that. And, and it's so really, it's a reflection on that. And, and the people who make up the, at the present the United Kingdom. Uh, and you spoke about it on, on Radio Suffolk before, but you received a, a letter of thanks from the Queen's lady-in-waiting, which you received the, the day before um, her death was announced. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that was extraordinary. Um, and it was very, very, very poignant because it had come uh, from Balmoral and um, from one of her chief ladies in waiting. And obviously the Queen had, had seen it, um, which is, is lovely, absolutely lovely, but it's very, very poignant. And, and we, I particularly, but in Eastern the Artist, we, we did a WhatsApp agonising about whether it was appropriate to show the piece because I certainly, again, regardless of, of what one thinks of the Queen, I certainly wouldn't want to be disrespectful. Um, but we thought that it was done respectfully and we thought amongst East the artists that it was OK to put that up. Um, and I'm very, you know, flattered or honoured or whatever to, to say that people who viewed the exhibition also took it in that respect, um, which I was happy about. And I mean, that's an interesting point about the value of, of the collective. You know, you have that shared space to have those conversations. Yeah. yeah, I mean, art can be quite isolating. You know, the actual process of creating can be quite isolating. Maybe it's important that a lot of the time you are on your own exploring things and things take time, but it's, it's brilliant. Uh, I've not been in this group for that long, about a year. It's brilliant to be able to bounce ideas off other artists and discuss their work and get that feedback uh, and to feel, literally, there's a collective. And I think this area of the country, I'm biased, of course, needs it. You know, you talked about inequalities, you talked about maybe aspects of Lowestoft being run down. I think there are seeds of regeneration, which I, I think the people deserve. 